Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I was thinking about something earlier today, and it actually had nothing to do with training, but I realized this is something that we could carry over into training. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skill at my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. And it was, uh, when it comes to something like uh, a business endeavor, or some professional endeavor, or pursuing some advanced degree or competitive mental endeavor of some type, um, I was thinking that, you know, something that children need to be taught eventually is that the that world isn't fair. Life isn't always fair. Not everyone starts in the same place. Not everyone has all the ac same access to things. Not everyone has the same inherent abilities. Different people have different limitations, and sometimes those are socially imposed. Sometimes those are genetically imposed. Uh, they vary. And the point is, it is possible for you to put in 100% effort and do your best, and I mean give your absolute best, to give 100% of everything that you are and still fail. And it's possible to do so in things that other things that other people have succeeded in, right? I mean, we'll see people out there who have been very successful in business or been very successful in some academic area. Um, who, who have reached high achievement and then we say hey I want to do that and then we throw everything that we have into it and we give 100% and fail it happens because sometimes for a given goal or endeavor your best might not be good enough your personal best might not be good enough. In fact, your personal best might not even be average. It might be below average. That's life. We all have gifts. We all have talents. We all have different abilities. And the worst part uh, and the feeling that, you know, that can really upset people, and so this is a lesson people learn oftentimes early in life, is when they put 100% percent into something and they know that they gave everything their absolute best to the bitter end in some endeavor and they fail and someone else comes in and puts in a half effort a lazy effort and makes what they achieve look embarrassing just destroy it blow it out of the water you know what that's life um, because some people are more intelligent than others some people have access to more resources than others some people are more gifted in certain areas, such as a given sport, which we're going to get to in training, a music uh, endeavor, mathematics, intelligence of some type. Uh, some people are just born more wealthy and with better contacts than others and are then given access to better information, better education in a given area, and have access to resources that gives them an enormous head start. And they might work really hard or they might not and still beat your best. And you know what? That's okay. That's why when we're talking about things to where you know you're not the most gifted in the world, you have to learn to say, okay, I'm going to give my best. And it, it, what is what I achieve reasonable? Did, did I achieve the best that I know that I could achieve with the risk I was willing to take? Or did I, did I have to ask it? And that's the question we all have to ask ourselves with anything that we do in life. Um, you know, if we don't achieve our desired result or we don't reach that goal, uh, did we really give it our best? And if we can say yes, then we have to learn to live with that. And that can be a very, very humbling thing. The problem that we have is that when it comes to the training world and the fitness world, unfortunately, those who either have access to the just born with the most inherent gifts towards it, or oftentimes can buy with access to the best drugs or whatever, they excel and they oftentimes achieve things that other people look at and go, I want to try to achieve that. Then they, they try and they do give it a legitimate go and they, they fall way short. And it could be something such as obtaining a certain physique. Uh, certain people are just born with better muscle fiber insertions, different better insertions, better shape for their muscles, different bone structure. You know what? You can't train your way and drug your way around insertions bone structure, things like that. I mean, you can definitely play to your weaknesses. Um, you can definitely uh, minimize your weaknesses and maximize your personal strengths. Don't think you can't do that. Anybody can do that. 
but someone else might come in and just simply be more gifted. I'll give you guys a perfect example in the whole bodybuilding world. Look at Flex Wheeler. Any of you guys ever watch Flex Wheeler train? He was lazy. I'm going to flat out say I've seen 60-year-old women in the gym train harder than Flex Wheeler did. His knowledge of training was horrifically bad when he was interviewed back in the day. Like his knowledge of training and the body was so bad that most of you, anyone who's read a basic book on exercise, would be embarrassed that, that like he's actually saying the things that he said. Like he didn't know how many heads of the deltoid there was. He was having to stop and try to think if there was three heads or four, he couldn't remember. But he's like, you got to train all of them. But then he had to stop and think about how many there were. So he'd know how many he had to train. And he trained lazy. But he was genetically gifted. And he used a lot of drugs. And he admitted he started using drugs the week after he joined a gym the first time. He got on steroids immediately. And he admitted that in another interview. But very gifted. Other people bust their ass. Real hard. Train smart. Use a ton of drugs. They don't achieve a fraction of what he did in that endeavor. Now, he also has lost kidneys and stuff. But, you know, that's besides the point. They fall short, though, because of their inherent genetics, and they trained way harder than he did, diet way stricter than he did. They still don't achieve it, even in spite of the drugs. Same thing with, uh, you know, powerlifting or strength. You know what? If I say that it's 700-pound deadlifts are very rare, a ton of people because of the energy, and I say, no, they're not. Tons and tons of people deadlift 700 pounds. What percentage of powerlifters you compete in competition do you think honestly ever deadlift 700 pounds? Not many. I'd venture to say that less than 1% of people who focus on the deadlift and who use steroids and who use steroids will ever hit a 700 pound deadlift. Maybe less than 1%. But a lot of people do it. Plenty of people do it. There's hundreds of documented 700 pound deadlifts in competition. Uh, there's 800 pound deadlifts, 900 pound deadlifts, there's over 900 pound deadlifts, all raw. I'm not even really going to get into the equipped or straps or anything, strongman competition. I'm talking about actual raw deadlifts. You know, they're there. They're there. But they're rare. And I've seen plenty of guys get on a decent powerlifting program use two grams of gear for several years and still be in the 600 range, 650, never hit that 700. Does it mean that they didn't train hard enough? Because people will say stuff like, well, if you just train hard enough, long enough, you'll get there. No, you won't. Not everyone has the ability to do that. It'd be nice if it worked that way, but it doesn't. So here's the point of all of this. Not everyone has the same gifts and same ability. And I'm not sitting here promoting mediocrity. I'm simply telling you that you may not have the genetic gifts to reach some goal just because another person has done it. Because, you know, you look at things like fat-free mass index. I say things like, you know, a 25%, a 25 fat-free mass index for people who are under 10% body fat is probably around the natural limit. People then assume that that means that the genetic elite are going to do way better. No, the 25 are usually the elite. But here's the thing. Not saying there are a few rare exceptions. There might be a one in a million person who has the genetics to hit 25 and a half. But they're one in a million. The top five to 10% can probably hit up to 24 and a half to 25 fat free mass index while being sub 10% body fat. But you know what? Most people don't. Even people who are successful don't. Go look how many natural pro bodybuilders there are and pull their stats and see how many of them are in the 23s. 23, 23 and a half, 24 fat-free mass index. That's really common even among dudes who won their pro card. Not saying they're natty just because uh, they compete natty and drug tested. They might be enhanced and still be under that. But look how many of them who are successful are under that number. But, you know... People see that and they say, well, if this person can do it, then I must be able to do it. Well, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Statistically, you can't. But hey, you might be that one in a million who can get 25 and a half. But the majority of people will never hit that 25 while being lean. Their frame and their genetics will simply not allow them to hold that much muscle at a normal hormone level. 
Uh, but you know what? That doesn't mean that you can't achieve your own best. Maybe the best you could do is 24. So get to the 24. If that's your goal, if you want to be the best that you can be, then do the best that you can be. Don't compare yourself to everyone else. Don't be upset when someone more gifted than you has achieved more than you have. Don't be upset by that. But by that same token, too, I hate it when you have these guys who use a ton of gear, say stuff like, you know, steroids is just a word. Uh, the lazy used to describe the dedicated. But they're blasting a bunch of gear. And they're probably genetically gifted. You know, and that's that's the reality of it, too. Um, you might be willing to work as hard as you possibly can, but you're not willing to take that risk. And you know what? If you're not willing to take that risk, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing. In fact, I would applaud that. If you say, hey, that risk isn't worth it for me. That's not worth it for my life. Then by all means, keep that stance. But don't get upset when someone who uses gear, even if they lie about it, say, oh, I don't use anything. I did this all natural. Buy my book, buy my ebook. Don't get upset if you don't reach what they achieved because they were willing to take a risk with their health, with their money, and with their freedom, because it might be illegal where they live, uh, to achieve that, a risk you weren't willing to take. So if you weren't willing to take that risk, don't get upset if you don't reach their goal or, and you don't achieve what they did. That's okay because you did the best that you could do inside the risk that you were willing to take. And as long as you give it your best and you train hard and you train smart and you train consistent, you have to learn to be happy with the different milestones that you achieve personally. That you achieve personally without comparing yourself to someone else who did better. Because if that's all you do, then you're going to end up being very unfulfilled and very miserable. And what people need to understand, this whole fitness journey is not always about comparing ourselves to everyone else and to others. It's about being the best that we can be. The best us that we can be. And it's about the journey. All right, guys. But that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.